grab your Bibles and I'm going to see you right back here in just a minute. week we talked about Mary and the angel Gabriel visiting her in a very special way and telling her that something very special was going to happen to her. And she agreed to be the mother of Jesus, God's son, which was a miracle. Nothing is impossible with God. And today we are picking up in Luke chapter 2, and I want to read to you what the Bible says about the very first Christmas, because this is the whole reason why we celebrate Christmas. It's because it was Jesus, it is Jesus' birthday. And so when we are leading up to Christmas and on Christmas morning even, I would really encourage you to read through Luke chapter 2, because it's just a really special way. Um, to, to make room for Jesus in your life, to make room for Jesus on your Christmas morning. Luke chapter 2, we're going to read little bits and pieces of it together today. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. And that Caesar Augustus, he was kind of like the king, okay? So, so the king or the president or something like that, the Caesar, he made a law. And it required that everyone would be listed. Everyone who was in the Roman world had to be on his list. It's called a census. It's counting the people. And this was the first time that a census was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So everyone had to go to their hometown. Now, if I had to go to my hometown, I would have to go to Liverpool, New York. Did you know that's where I'm from? I'm from New York. So I would have to go all the way up north, all the way to central New York. Now, some of you were born right here in Indiana, and so maybe you would stay in your town. Maybe you were born in Terre Haute. You'd have to travel over to Terre Haute. Uh, maybe you were born in another state. I don't know. But you would have to travel to the place where your family was from. And so Joseph had to go to Nazareth um, in Galilee and Judea. Um, so so the, that's a lot of different names. So like I said, Liverpool, New York. He had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. Okay, if that if that makes sense. So he had to go to Bethlehem, which was a town, um, because he was from the family of David. Okay, and he was married at this point to Mary. And we remember from last week in Luke chapter one um, that Mary was pregnant with the baby Jesus. And we learned last week that G that God was Jesus's father. Joseph was not Jesus's father. God was, which was a really, really special thing. And so Jesus is God. Jesus is God in human form in Mary's belly. Now Mary was, was very pregnant. She was expecting Jesus to be born soon. And Joseph and Mary had to travel. And so they they probably, you know, brought a donkey with some some trail rations, some some food uh to bring along with them as as they traveled down to Bethlehem and and while Joseph and Mary were there, the time came for Jesus to be born. So remember, your finger is right there on verse 7 on Luke chapter 2. Now I want to tell you a little bit about what happened, but in order to do that, I want to show you something first. Can I show you something that I just absolutely love? Oh, look at this. This makes me so happy. First of all, I love art supplies. And second of all, I love how these are organized by color and so beautiful. But, you know, I've actually got two boxes like this. And the first one I was trying to set up so you could see it and it just, 
it got all messy. It's ridiculous, you guys. So I'm actually really glad though because I've got enough room in one box. So I'm actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to fit all of these in just the one box. So here we go. Here's a bunch of black ones. They're all black, so I'm gonna put them in with the black and there's totally room for these. I just need to like put them in the right way. Oh, wait a second. These are not the same size. I didn't even realize that. Okay, well we can still make room for them though. Like, well, okay. This isn't gonna work exactly like I thought it would, but okay, we're gonna we're gonna make room. Like they're they're kind of <laughs> they're having trouble, but um, okay, we're gonna put some reds in. Here we go. Now, do you see what I mean? Like they're too tall for the box, but. We can make it work. We can totally make room because this is like a dire situation, right? We got to make room. <sighs> okay. All right. And then, I mean, I think that even these can like stick out just a little bit. That's not going to be too big of a deal. I'm going to put some greens in there. I've, I've realized that like putting them sideways definitely works better than anything else. I just don't know if there's room for these ones. I'm gonna, I'll put them here and we'll try. We'll just try to make room in that way. And then these ones, good grief. They're so much bigger than the little ones. I really had no idea, guys, that they were different sizes until I started doing this, but okay. Let's see here. I wonder if I, see, I'm trying everything I can think of to fit them. I, I thought that maybe like these ones are going this way. I thought maybe if I go that way, but then they just kind of fall. Oh dear, now these are falling, but I'm making room, right? Like I'm making it work. I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job of making this work. best that I could. I feel like I fit as many as I possibly could into this box. The box isn't even going to close, but I, I made it work. Like I made them fit as much as I possibly can, right? So we're just, we're going to be done now. We're going to close it up. Now we've already talked about how Jesus was very, very special, right? I mean, he was not just an ordinary baby. He was God, God, he was God's son. He was God in human form. And so, and so it's, it's almost like, it's like a bringing out a marker <laughs> with all those crayons, right? Like, like the, the marker is the special one because of all the crayons. Now that's like no comparison, right? To Jesus versus us. There's, there's no way to compare it, but this is the best thing I could think of. Okay. And so this is what happened was Everybody was crowding into Bethlehem. Everybody who was from Bethlehem had to go to Bethlehem. So not only the people who already lived in Bethlehem were there, it was plus all these other people who had moved to other places for one reason or another. And so now all of the hotels are jam-packed because everybody who is from Bethlehem, from the line of David, has to go there, has to go to that city. That t and not even a city, it was a town, right? And then Jesus got there. And because Mary was so pregnant with baby Jesus, it probably took them a lot longer to get there. And so the inns were already packed full. So, all of a sudden, there's one more. And it's like a super special one. But man, I've already decided, like, I cannot fit any more in this box. My box already isn't going to close, you guys. Like, oh, I already, like, there is no room. There's just no room for this. I can't do it. I cannot accept any more at all. So now let's pick up back in verse 7. Luke chapter 2, verse 7. She gave birth to her first baby. It was a boy. Hey, we already knew that, didn't we? Because the angel told us that. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth, then she placed him in a manger 
Now listen to this. That's because there was no guest room where they could stay. Do you know what a manger is? A manger is a feeding trough. I mean, in a barn, if you're picturing a barn, the the big wooden, or maybe today they're metal, I don't know, I haven't been in a barn recently, thing that they put all of the hay in. And, and if there's pigs in there, there's probably slop in it, you know? It's just gross. And it's what the animals eat out of. And I imagine that maybe Joseph kind of cleaned it out with his cloak if he needed to and put some hay in there. But that's where Jesus, Jesus, God's son, the most special baby that has ever been born, was born. And we're going to pick up there next week. Sometimes it feels absolutely impossible to make room for Jesus in our lives. I mean, truly impossible. Like, like there's just too much going on. And you know what? That's something that you guys are going to have to struggle with even more than your parents did, even more than I did. Because you live in an age where there's technology everywhere. There's lots of different um, expectations on you that weren't on your parents and weren't on me. And so we need to be extra careful. You need to be extra careful to make room for Jesus in your life. The innkeeper found a room for Jesus, right? In his barn, in his stable. Um, we need to make room for Jesus that's like the best room for Jesus. I mean, honestly, like if I, if we, if we figure that this marker is Jesus, like let's just pretend and then, and this box is my life. I mean, what I probably want to do is make like a whole room. I just want to clear. And in order to do that, guys, I had to clear stuff out, right? And I had to make a room just for Jesus. And I had to give up some things. Sometimes we've got to give up some things to make room for Jesus in our lives. Sometimes we need to say no to commitments. Sometimes we need to say no to friends or to screen time. Sometimes we need to close our door just to spend some time with Jesus. Sometimes we need to ask a friend if they will read the Bible with us or ask our parent if they'll read the Bible to us. You know, we need to make room for Jesus in our lives. One way to make room for Jesus in your life is to pray all the time, constantly be praying. Like I used to do this when I was in middle school, I started doing this, I would like walk around um, at school, like walk around in the hallway, and anytime like if I saw somebody, you know, drop their, backpack or somebody who looked like they were running late to class, I would pray for them. And then I'd get into class and I would pray that God would, I don't know, help me, help me to focus and pay attention. Or if it was a class that I really didn't like, I would, I would pray that God would help me to find something interesting. Or um, if I saw somebody who seemed especially sad, I would pray that they would find joy. If I knew about somebody who you know, maybe didn't know Jesus, I would pray that they would find him. So praying consistently is a way to make room for Jesus in your life. And that's something that you can do wherever you are. I mean, that, that kind of brings Jesus into every box, right? And it's a really, really easy way to do that. Sometimes we have to say no to commitments. Like if there's a commitment, like a sports team, sports teams tend to really like to meet on Sundays. And I don't know why they do that, but that's a really good, a really easy no. You could decide, you could make that decision. No, I'm not going to join a sports team that meets during church. I'm not gonna do it. Church is gonna come first. And the reason that church is gonna come first is not because I want to check it off my, my to-do list, like, okay, good, I'm being a good Christian, I'm going to church, check. No, that's not what it's about. It's about getting closer to Jesus every single week. And that's a way, I mean, that's cleaning some stuff out, but it makes room for Jesus. 
another thing uh, that we can do is talking about Jesus, talking about God in our everyday lives. Parents, this really falls on you. Because what happens when when we turn off the TV for church or when we when we get into the car after leaving ch the church building is is we just kind of fall into the rhythm of all of these other things, right? Like, okay, we got to get dinner on the table. Okay, we got to get our homework done. Oh yeah, we told uh, this person that we'd go to their birthday party and we got to buy a Christmas present for this person. And, and we forget what we came to church to do in the first place was, was to, to make Jesus, to make God our, our focus this week. This is especially important this week. You know what this week is, right? It's Christmas. It's Christmas this week. And so I really encourage you to make room for Jesus in your Christmas this week. Make room for him. Find ways to make Jesus the focus of Christmas. Not just something like you talk about in the morning and then you get to have you know, cinnamon rolls and open presents. Not just something that, you know, okay, well, we went to the Christmas Eve service and now let's focus on, it's all about family and it's about presents and it's about giving. No, it's not. It's about Jesus. Make Jesus the focus of your Christmas today, this week. Make Jesus the focus of every day, every hour, every minute. Make room for Jesus this week.